someone said Corvette, they could be referring to a small, agile warship. In 1953, that all changed because Chevrolet reapplied the word upon a badge applied to a small, agile, two-passenger sports car. The Corvette came to be, and the world was a changed place because of it. Evolution occurred, and the blue flame-packing roadster gave way to shark-inspired styling and delightfully decadent big-block V8 engines. Eventually, however, the car became boxed in due to the fact that it was a uniquely American machine being snatched up by uniquely American car buyers. The rest of the world moved on with their sports cars, while the Corvette maintained a singular focus on its engine ability and not much else. The Corvette world got a little brighter when the sixth generation VET appeared. It still wasn't ready for global consumption, however, and again, the rest of the world laughed at our oversized seats and subpar interior. Now though, it's our turn to have a bit of fun. The C7 Corvette has arrived, and it's ready to battle for global sports car supremacy. When you think of the name Chevrolet Corvette, it's gonna evoke images of overweight white American men wearing shirts they bought at Tommy Bahama. That's a problem. It's a stereotype for the car, but it exists for a reason. We're now entering the seventh generation of the Corvette, and I think it's time that Chevrolet shakes that image, and they're gonna do it with this vehicle right here. This is the C7, the 2014 Chevrolet Corvette Stingray. This is the convertible version, in fact. So we've got a long way to go. We've come C1, C2, C3, C4, C5, C6. There's something in there for everyone, but that everyone is a small subset. Now though, we have a car that's ready to take on the entire planet. Since this is a Corvette, we're dealing with, you can guess it, a V8 engine. This is the new V8 engine. And in standard guise, it puts out 455 horsepower and 460 pound-feet of torque. This car, though, is fitted with the optional performance exhaust system, which raises each of those figures by five. That's good, because now we're doing 460 horsepower and 465 pound-feet of torque. That's enough to push this car from zero to 60 miles per hour in about 3.8 seconds, and that's quick. We're dealing with some of the fastest cars on the planet now. Yes, everybody's getting lower and lower in the three-second range. There are a few that are even breaking into the twos, but anything under four is pretty much blisteringly fast, and this base entry-level Corvette is no exception. got the looks on the outside. This is a Corvette for the modern day. It's a Corvette should, that should appeal to a broad swath of the car buying public, not just here in America, but across the entire planet. And that's an important thing because it means that maybe the rest of the world will finally accept that America builds a damn good sports car. But it's nothing if it's just looks. It also needs to go, and this car goes quite well. The engine under the hood is paired in this car with a seven-speed manual gearbox. Now you can get a six-speed auto. There's an eight-speed coming. Who cares? Get the, get the manual gearbox, row your own, because this is a delightful piece of machinery right here. It's really tight, it's really well-spaced. Uh, at the first time you hop into this car, you might be missing a few gears here and there you know fifth you might go to third or seventh and and you know what though forget about seventh you don't need seventh gear if, unless you're cruising on the highway yeah throw it in seventh if you're at 80 85 and there's nobody in sight but if that's not the case ignore seventh you're gonna get surprisingly decent fuel economy anyway I'm if I'm doing a lot of highway I'm easily into the 20s this has cylinder deactivation so you can drive it as a four-cylinder car um, but I like to play with the various mode select options here. You know, you get into the car, it's in touring, pop it into sport, it's a little more aggressive. Go to track if you just like to be rough riding all the time. Um, I like a little bit more comfort than that, so I'm going with this option here. Now you can also, because it's the manual gearbox, is grab one of these paddles, 
and you've turned the rev matching on. Some people might scoff at that. You can heel toe if you want. You can turn it off, which is fine. Just turn it off. But if you're like me and you've got fat feet and you're only good at heel towing occasionally, why not play with it a little bit and have some fun? I'll pop it up to third right now, but if I'm approaching a corner, boom, perfect rev matched downshift. And that makes the car even more enjoyable. But like I said, if you're a heel and toe perfectionist, just turn the system off. No need to get bent out of shape about it because the thing that will make you happy regardless of whether you're good at it or not is that engine noise. Let's hear it for a second. Oh yeah. It's practically baby making music to an automotive enthusiast. Uh, it never gets old. It never, ever, ever gets old. In fact, I'm gonna give it another run. We're in sixth, no, I'm sorry. We're, I'm gonna give it another run. I'm in third gear, I'm going under a tunnel. I'm going six miles an hour. I quickly got up to 10 miles an hour there. So, you know, it's fast. Ergonomically, it's big improvement too. Corvettes of old were built to accept wide bodies. Let's be honest, the seats are comfortable, but that's because the people sitting in them were heftier than usual. Now though, it's a little bit tighter in here. If you're any bigger than I am at 6'3", 220, you might have a hard time. It's my, the seat's all the way back, uh, and it feels like I'm in an enclosed cockpit space, even though the roof over my head is gone, which is nice. Still, it's, it's tighter, it's more focused, the, the center stack is canted towards the driver, it's covered in carbon fiber, it's got nice red stitching, there's a grab handle for your passenger so he doesn't completely crap his pants when you decide to hammer it. So there is just a lot to love in all aspects of the car. If I had to nitpick on the interior because I sound like I'm just praising the car endlessly because I'm falling in love with it, it's that the seat belt constantly pops out of this loop and it's hard to reach when you get in and out. There you go. That's my nitpick for the interior. Fix that, put a little strap or buckle around it like they do in other cars, and you know what? Then I'll have nothing to complain about. So what do we have here? Well, this is a Chevy. It's obviously a Corvette, but more importantly, it's a world-class sports car. It's also a modern iteration or take on a legend. The Chevy Corvette's an icon. I don't care where you live in the world, you can't deny that. It's an iconic sports car. Now though, it's an amazing sports car that can do best with everything the planet has to offer. Bring on the Germans, bring on the Italians. The Americans are coming with some heavy artillery. We're dealing with the base model here. It's a Stingray, but it's the entry level V8. You know, we've got a Z06 on the horizon. They say they're not gonna be building a ZR1, but you know, word on the street is uh, there's a ZR1 coming, and that thing's gonna be insane. The Z06 is gonna be insane. This entry level Corvette, you know, this one has a few options on it, but the, it's essentially an entry level Corvette, is able to do battle with some of the world's greats. And that's saying a lot, and that means this car's come a long way. Deny it all you want, the Corvette is a true sports car that's ready to kick some ass. We're not even dealing with the most aggressive version yet. This is the base model. This is the Corvette. This is the one that, you know, you, you, fuck, hold on, stop it. I gotta think of something else.